Greetings, YouTube. Um, my friend Jan said something to me recently that I think is highly appropriate, and that is complex relationships be complex. Kind of where the title for this came from. Um, at the beginning of the month of October, my father passed away. Uh, he was four days short of his 86th birthday. Now, hold off on your condolences, uh, because quite frankly, I don't need nor want them. The reason I say that is that I have had a very complex relationship with my father for my entire life. Uh, growing up, he was an abusive alcoholic. Um, and my parents were together for the first 14 years of my life, and then they got separated. And for the first 14 years of my life, I was told that I was stupid every single day. I was yelled and screamed at every single day on the good days. On the bad days, I was hurt. Uh, he was both, both, he was good at both physical harm as well as psychological and emotional trauma. He excelled at, excelled at tormenting you mentally. Um, he wasn't a smart man, but he was clever. And he'd learned how to be manipulative because he was raised by an abusive alcoholic and my grandfather had been raised by an abusive al alcoholic and my great-grandfather, you get the point, uh, for the entire line of my family as far back as anyone can met, remember it's been a long line of abusive alcoholics. I am the first person in my family uh, on the male side to not be an abusive al alcoholic. In fact, I never became an alcoholic at all. Um, I did drink. I was really damn good at it. Uh, I started drinking at 14, um, and at 22, I came home from work one day, and I looked in the fridge, and I said, I know I really need a beer. And the day I said need and beer in the same sentence, I stopped drinking, and it's been 37 years. So, yeah, I've been not drinking for longer than I had been drinking, which is a nice thing. Um when my I was 29, my finally father finally got sober. Uh basically because he'd had to have quadruple bypass surgery, which meant he had a scar that started here and ended at his right ankle. Just they just opened him up like a fish to get the veins out of his legs so they could put them out around his heart. Uh because he had complete blockage. And the doctor said, you've got a choice. Uh, you can stop drinking or you can die. Interestingly, it was the same reason his father stopped drinking. He had a triple bypass, as did his wife, for that matter, because she was married to an abusive alcoholic. Because um, even after my grandfather uh, stopped drinking, he was still a miserable bastard. And I say that as someone who did love him when I was a kid, but he was a miserable bastard. He even went on antidepressants at one time, which changed him, made him not a miserable bastard, and he missed it. So he stopped taking his antidepressants so she, he could return to being a miserable bastard, because that made him happier. Complex relationships be complex. Um, so my father got dry, which is great, and his second wife and he were together for... 38 years, no, 36 years, I think. Far longer than my parents have been married to each other. And he helped raise two of the kids, the other ones that are left at that point. Um, he tried to be violent with the two boys at home. Uh, he hit the youngest one once, and the second oldest, the second youngest was the same age I am, looked him straight in the eye and said, if you ever touch my brother again, don't forget, I know where you sleep. And my father had just run out of people to hit. He continued to drink until I was 29, but he ran out of people to hit, which probably frustrated him to no end. Um, but he helped raise the grandkids and even the great grandkids. And there's this entire group of people, which is a substantial number, who think of them as just this nice old dude. And for him, that's what he was. He was their grandfather or their great-grandfather who was loyal to his wife. And they argued and bitter, bitch, bit, uh, bitched at each other constantly. And they were 
reasonably happily married for 36 years. And that's not something that you get a lot of. I'm never going to be married to my wife for 36 years. I'm 59 years old. We've been married 19 years. I got married at 40. I'm, I'm not going to, I don't think I'm going to get to live long enough to that. I don't think I'll hit that age. I really don't. <laughs> I'll be honest. Um, but yeah, we. I'm not going to probably go another 20 years or so, but we'll find out. Maybe I will. Um, but for the last couple of years, uh, I'd had almost no contact with my father. In fact, I can remember the last conversation we had. It was not of any great import, and he wanted to know why I hadn't been around to see him. And part of it was because he had moved further away than 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 he had uh, been until then. He'd been very close to me. I would visit him every week or a couple of weeks, and he moved far away, like more than an hour. And I don't like to drive, and I didn't have any reason to go in that direction of the at all. There's just no reason for me to ever go there. And he was surrounded by his second family, folks that I have no real connection with. I don't dislike any of them. I just don't like any of them either. I don't really know them, and I don't nearly want to know them. Uh, I know that I have one stepbrother that I want really nothing to do with because he has a white power tattoo. Um, but uh, for the most part, they're just not my family. And I guess technically now that he's dead, they're not my family at all anymore. Um, but then I got serotonin. And in particular, when I my doctor upped my serotonin levels to what they are now, I take, two, uh, I take a pill every 12 hours. Um, I suddenly realized that my relationship with my parents was one based upon guilt. I felt guilt, and because of that sense of guilt, I was in contact with both of my parents. But then I asked my therapist, what am I guilty of? And of course the answer to that was nothing. I had done nothing. I exist without my consent. I did not ask to be born into this world. I did not ask to become the child of an abusive alcoholic and a passive-aggressive enabler. That was not something I signed up for intentionally. And my therapist explained to me that abusers and passive-aggressive enablers understand that fundamentally on some level what they're doing is wrong how they are treating this person, this child, is wrong. But if they were to face that, if they were to admit it, if they were to confront that, that would mean that they were wrong, that they had done something that they shouldn't have done. And lots of people can't handle that. Their egos cannot tolerate it. So rather than accept the reality of the situation and then do something to dismantle it, make amends, and move forward, they instead externalize their own feelings of guilt and shame by imposing them upon their victims. So I was made to feel guilty for nothing I did. And suddenly I had enough serotonin in my brain and I realized that I didn't want any contact with my parents. That I didn't hate them, but I didn't love them either. They were just people. People I knew. People I had a very complex relationship with. And they're just don't need to be in my life. So I didn't see my father again. Uh, my sister was nice enough to keep me apprised of his health, which eventually deteriorated. Um, he went into palliative care, and then near the la and, and then near the end, they brought him home so he could be at home when he died, or his new home is a place that he'd lived in for less than two years. Uh, I really actually liked the house they had. Was the ones that were closer to me. He had two different places that he lived. I liked both of them. 
Uh, I never saw the other one. Um, I hear it's nice. His one of his stepkids actually made it for he and, and his and his wife, which is you know their mother. Um, and the guy's a fairly talented const uh, uh, contractor, so I'm sure that it was well well made. But I just never saw the place. But he got to go home, and uh, three days later, he was gone. Uh, his body just gave out. It wore out. He'd had some cognitive issues uh, near the end, which was, you know, terrifying because one of the greatest fears I've got is losing my faculties. It's one of the reasons I am a rabid and consumer of information. I'm trying to keep my brain as full as possible. Maybe I can stave off the accumulation of platelets in my synapses and keep myself a little sharper because if I'm going to have to slip away, I don't want it to be that way. Um, I'd rather go out on my own terms than have to slowly degrade into something that I'm not. So he's gone. Um, in fact, at the time of this recording, he hasn't even been buried yet. Or cremated. I don't think he's being buried. I can't remember. It really doesn't matter to me. I have no intention of going to the funeral. Um, nor has there been a, uh, a, a an assessment of the estate. Uh, so I have no idea if I am or will be getting any portion of his assets. I know he had them um, about, I don't know, 15 or 16 years ago, one year, uh, he gave each of the kids uh, $5,000 for Christmas, which came out to $35,000. That's a, that's a chunk of change right there. Um, so he has assets or had them. I guess he hasn't really had them anymore. Um, so maybe I'll be getting a piece of that. Maybe I won't. And I don't, I don't really have an emotional connection to that either. And it's not just me being distant from it. I legitimately don't have a connection to it. If I get something out of it, awesome. I'll put it to good use. I'll pay down debt. I'll improve my shop, buy myself some trinkets to make me happy, make sure that I, you know, as many things as we can will get paid off. But if I don't, I don't. In fact, last night I was having a conversation with my wife and we were discussing cats. Here's a cat. And we have a tuxedo cat, uh, Cersei. And she's the second tuxedo cat we have had. The first one was Haywire. And he was the best cat we ever had in my entire life. He was my favorite cat of all time. And uh, Cersei is right up there, like number two, because we just seem to have luck with tuxedo cats. So we make it kind of make sure that we always have one in the mix. We always have three. And I was talking about the fact that, you know, we've had a three, I've had three gray tigers. We have a gray tiger now, Dwight. And uh, one of our previous cats, Makana, he was a gray tiger. He was, he lived here. But a long time ago, I had a cat named Moo, um, yeah, M-U. And he was a gray tiger and he was awesome. And he unfortunately had a rather significant hairball one day and he just choked to death because he was home alone. And I've always felt a great deal of regret for that, that I let him down. And in that moment last night, having that conversation with my wife, I felt and I still feel just saying it now, a sense of emotional connection and a sense of guilt because I wasn't there when he needed me. And yet, there's no emotional connection whatsoever to the death of my father. Not one whit. So, it is what it is. I have no idea if anyone's gotten to this far in the video. I'm rambling here. I understand that, and I apologize. But as my friend Jan said so aptly, complex relationships be complex. So I hope that you have, you folks have better relationships with your parents. I hope they're healthy. And I hope you have a good relationship with your kids. I hope they're healthy. And if you don't, fix it. You're an adult. You can learn and change. 
you can make amends make sure that the connections are as good as they can possibly be and hopefully someday there won't be somebody like me making a video like this <laughs>